Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Starbucks. <laughs> I just thought I'd do a little video about Starbucks because I've been using Starbucks to work from for many years now, all over the world actually. Um, Bali, Vietnam, Thailand, Malaysia, all throughout Europe and USA as well, of course, the home of Starbucks. Uh, even Peru, Lima, and Mexico, and just all over. And uh, I know in most digital nomad circles, they're kind of criticised, and you know, people <clears throat> be seen dead in them, and they're a big nasty corporation, and blah blah blah. But uh, you know, I, I thought I'd give you five reasons why I use Starbucks, and I'll talk about the whole big uncool thing about Starbucks at the end, but um, anyway, without further ado. So, um, so one of the, the, the first reason I would say, number one, is uh, Starbucks always have free Wi-Fi. I can't ever recall being, I think, the Starbucks one time in Thailand used to charge you uh, 200 baht for an hour, which is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, that's like uh, a lot of money, basically. So, um, but certainly in the, my recent trips to Bangkok and other parts of Thailand, uh, it's been free. So free Wi-Fi, it's always uh, good to have. A lot of cafes, uh, privately owned ones, don't tend to have free Wi-Fi because they don't want people sitting there all day using the Wi-Fi and not buying stuff. And I absolutely totally get that but um anyway starbucks uh you know they always tend to have free wi-fi so and that that kind of leads me on to my number two reason out of five is that i never feel guilty about overstaying in starbucks and it's a number of reasons why i mean firstly they are a big corporation and they make massive profits and um you know, for, for that reason alone, I don't really feel guilty about staying a long time. Sorry if the sound's not great in here, but um, hopefully you can hear me through the mic. Yeah, so, you know, because they're a big corporation, and I guess on the, on the flip side of that as well, and, uh, most of the staff that work in Starbucks, you know, they're just kind of staff and they're not owners, they don't really have any you know, I'm sure they care about their, their job and their, they have targets to meet and everything, but, you know, they don't, um, I've never had one say to me, look, you know, you've been here a long time, it's about time you left or whatever. So they're, they're probably more interested in what they're doing after work, I don't know. So, um, yeah, I, I don't feel, it, it's easy to stay a long time in a Starbucks. In a private cafe, now, I, to start off with, I wouldn't, overstay my welcome anyway um, you know the and when I say private I mean like you know just a one person kind of business um, you know who are trying to make ends meet in a cafe I would never do that and uh, totally respect <laughs> you know I'd go in there and I'd work but you know I'd, I'd, I wouldn't kind of overstay my welcome and um, probably be more inclined to buy food as well I don't tend to buy food in Starbucks because uh, it's, I don't think it's so great, but I don't know. Yeah, sometimes I do. Muffins are okay, but, um, but yeah, in, in, a, in a normal cafe, I'd, um, yeah, I'd more likely buy food. So that's the second reason. So the third reason, uh, there's always data plug points in Starbucks. I can't really ever remember going to one and having a problem finding somewhere to plug in. Uh, now, I sometimes use my uh, my tablet to work on and the battery life is like 14 or 15 hours so I don't even have to look for plug points. But like today, for instance, uh, I have my laptop which is kind of sitting behind my phone that's recording and the battery life is about 90 minutes so it's you know, I'd, I'd need to, um, there you go, I'll just do that a bit more. Yeah, I, I'd need to plug in at some point, but um, Starbucks, they always have plug points, plenty of them. 
sometimes you get like a long row, you know, of desks and they have them underneath each seat and yeah, you know, the, I guess they know people are going to come in and, you know, you plug in and pl char recharge their phones and whatever, so, so that's the third reason. Number four is, well, they're pretty much everywhere. I mean, you know, is that a reason specifically to go to them over somewhere else? I don't know, but you know, they're kind of convenient because they are pretty much everywhere. I mean, even, I think there's one now opened in India and, uh, you know, they're, they're kind of comfortable and you kind of know what you're going to get. Again, that might not be necessarily a good thing, but um, you know, there's just abundance of them, you know, particularly in the UK, in Europe, in North America, in Asia as well, there's like loads of them. Uh, so, so, so they're convenient, you know, because they're all, all over the place. Um, and my, my final, number five, might surprise people, but um, so I'm in Portugal at the moment, in Lisbon, which is kind of famous for many things, but cheap coffee. Uh, I had uh, two coffees on the way here today, so I took a, I'm staying on the outskirts of Lisbon, I took a train into the city, um, so I paid 90 cents uh, for my first coffee and my second one was one euro, and this one, which is a Grande Cafe Latte, was two euros 90. Now actually that's very cheap <laughs> uh, for a Grande Latte, I paid a way more than that. Places like Indonesia, Singapore, uh, Vietnam as well is really expensive. I think that comes up on the the, the kind of Starbucks index of uh, you know how much coffees cost around the world. I think some of those countries are actually more expensive. So so you're probably thinking why you, you know you're paying three times. But um, just to give you an example here in Portugal, the the 90 cents one euros coffees, even if you ask for a grande, they're like really small. I mean, they literally, they go in two, two gulps and they're gone and they're, they're really nice and they're actually generally taste better than Starbucks. Um, but, you know, really the, there's no difference in the value <laughs> because there's probably at least three night one euro coffees in this three euro coffee, two nine, you know, two euro 90 cents. So, you know, I wouldn't go as far to say that Starbucks is good value, but I think it's a bit of a misconception that the, it's really, it's much cheaper to go, you know, to other coffee shops. Uh, and I, I honestly don't think that's the case. Um, I think you can easily end up paying, you know, if we're talking about quantity, certainly, I mean, Starbucks is definitely no worse or no better. So there you go, um, so just going back to, so that's my five reasons and I mean I do understand why a lot of digital nomads are quite anti Starbucks, they wouldn't even be seen dead in one and you know it's a personal choice at the end of the day, you know these kind of digital nomads that would avoid Starbucks for whatever reasons, I'm sure they use, you know, I mean airlines you know, they'll use airlines, I mean, they're big, bad corporations, <laughs> and, yeah, you know, it's a personal choice, but I've never been uh, sniffy about using Starbucks, and, you know, I'll, I'll use McDonald's, I mean, I've been to a couple of McDonald's to use their Wi-Fi as well, again, hugely unpopular with a lot of people, and, you know, again, I understand why, but, you know, for, for me, Starbucks is, uh, I'm not saying it's my go-to place, but honestly, I, I think, um, well, they, well, they kind of welcome people with laptops. You know, I'll, I'll probably still use them. And uh, I will say um, one thing, I don't know if the tide is turning against people in Starbucks use it, you know, like me whether Starbucks is kind of getting wise to this and ultimately they don't do they want somebody like me sitting here for two hours with one coffee taking up a space I mean in this Starbucks at the moment uh, it's loads of empty tables um, you know it might get busier later but uh, 
but I, I did know it's in a couple of the UK Starbucks when I was there before. Uh, the seating arrangements are kind of really uncomfortable because there were no tables, like I'm sitting at a normal table, like this, and a normal chair. Whoa! Hi again, sorry I, I lost you there, I dropped the phone. So I'm just recording off my uh, regular Samsung S5, so <laughs> that's why the video quality is not that great, but I just dropped my phone then. Now I, I was just really summing it up, um, yeah I'm mentioning in the UK, I know it's the, a few of the Starbucks, have, I think they've deliberately made the seating quite uncomfortable, um, and not so many plug points, and uh, not so many tables like this that are quite easy, you know, nice to work off. I don't, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but maybe they're, they're thinking, um, you know, obviously they, you know, they're a big corporation, they're, they're a business, they want people, they want a high turnover of customers coming in and, you know, obviously someone's sitting there all day or whatever is not really what they want. So uh, I'd imagine, I don't know if that's going to become a trend, but um, definitely I remember one Starbucks somewhere in the north of England near York actually and honestly that all the seats were so uncomfortable you you wouldn't want to there weren't really any tables the way it was just the, the layout was like you wouldn't want to <laughs> uh, you know you couldn't really get comfortable working in there so I'm pretty sure that's a deliberate ploy but anyway until then I'm still going to use Starbucks and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, I, you know, I hope you make loads of comments and subscribe to my Working Nomad channel, um, which would be really cool, but, um, I'm, you know, I'm sure there'll be loads of people saying, oh, Starbucks, but, you know, that's cool. I mean, I, I like to open up uh, a debate and, you know, it's kind of a uh, love or hate them, I guess, but um, for me, I, I love them for now anyway. Okay, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.